take a private here. Again. And um wasn't really supposed to do I make so many PC videos, but now that I've actually done an upgrade for, for one of my sons, then the other one also turned up and said if I could actually do something about it. Oh, his rig, which is also getting of age. So, uh, that monitor adds up just a little bit dusty. So anyway, I thought I'd walk through um, how to deal with um, slide the other day home computer equipment and have a little bit of a, yeah, just go through the steps. And I mean, if it isn't in, of interest, then just jump over this. But um, for those having a, having a family with multiple computers, it might be good to see how one actually reduce them. Anyway, the, um, the monitor we're going to be keeping and then we're just going to be going through this disgusting central unit. Once I've got it de-dusted. Okay, now I have to try and clean off this monitor. Usually I use the compressed air, so I might actually delete the audio from the section I'm using the compressed air because it can be a bit loud. Need air protection. that have a compressor. The pedestal's got a bit, a bit scratched. I don't know if there's been something chafing up against. I can't get it clean. Well, I mean, it's, you, you can see it if you look against the light that it's actually very. It's been relatively. Uh, uh, they push the keyboard up against it. Oh, this is starting to. Much about scratches though.
make it a bit nicer to work with. It's quite a good display. I don't think I want to change it up. No, sir. Except for, of course, the scratches on the pedestal. Okay, next will be the main unit then. Oh, I need to clean up some extra, extra bits. I 3D printed a, a um, holder for, the, for um, the headset. It wasn't 100% successful on 3D printer. It um, actually works. Ah, but this won't work on the new uh, Cables need also be cleaned off. central unit. Well, in the same process. Exactly the same, but we blow the all the main dust from the outside first. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to salvage parts from this. Because the main weak point in this computer is, is the graphics card and that's a special 7 centimeter European units size uh, uh, height. And um, uh, where I am it's very hard to source that at a re any kind of a good um, card with that form factor at any reasonable price. 
Oh, it's locked up, Dusty. It's like. Anyway, well. See? It's actually. Actually, it's quite clean. I'm gonna blow it out. Plus, the power supply is very. Seems to be very weak on this one. Put the protection plastic in the sun. I'm wondering why that wasn't looking so good. Anyway, so this is how it looks. And, um, Mainly wants it to upgrade uh, or get a better graphics card, and as you see, the power supply really isn't up to sh up to speed on that. Having a bigger graphics card, plus the thing is, it's hard to source that. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to take it to the bench, and I'll show you how to dismantle and take out the parts we might use in another build, and we're basically going to build another another computer in another case to solve this if that power supply does not look very big Anyway, that's of no real interest. Now. Anyway, so that's um basic cleanup operation done. We'll move to the bench and continue the initiative. Okay, sorry for the fan noise, but it's there. Uh, it's a bit hot. I need to have the air conditioning on. Um, anyway, we're gonna. So the plan is we're gonna salvage some parts from here as many as we can. Interesting to see how one actually goes about that. So what I would like to salvage is memory processor and um, So let's see, are these usable or is this DDR3? 
Come on, give me data. PC4. Oh, I think it is DDR4 at least. I mean, with very high likelihood it is actually. But, you know, it gets a bit paranoid. Actually, look at the label on the. Let's see. Let's just look at the label. Yes, let's see if that has any. It says the amount that max. Does not say what type of memory. Oh, I'll do a Google search on the memory sticks just to, And of course the connector, I can just look at the physical connector also. Okay, so mission one accomplished. Now I would like to take the hard drive out. Probably this is and as a CD-ROM station. Which is bolted on top, and then I'm assuming that it's this. No, I can't see it on the camera. Anyway, here are the connectors. So I removed the connectors for both the CD and the hard drive, which is there. This still has no SSDs. I just want the hard drive out. so expensive to rebuild this computer. Probably never do it. And plus you can't have a bigger graphics card. Well, not without spending an unreasonable amount. Of money. Because this is not an HTPC system, so there's no real point in spending the money on. But I'll package it up with the screws. Let it start. Okay, that's it. Got some extra bags, got some uh, alcohol. Now we're going to actually try and get this processor out. So it's a kind of a standard, standard setup. Four screws. Thank you. 
actually wipe that stuff the thermal paste away before it gets everywhere. So we we'll try and take the thermal paste off the top of it. Get this thermal paste in the pins. That would be bad news. Seems to clean up from the process much better <laughs> from the actual heat. Pretty happy with that. I think this thing should not <laughs> can't cock the motherboard. Now we'll go blow this out because it's got some paper, paper stuck in it. Do that separately. screws in here. And then I was going to put the heat sink in here because it's so sharp and I was going to just try and put it back in. I don't think I actually need that back. So anyway what we will do now is try and what is there still some Thermal place before 
and I lift it up. And I think that's I'll be prepared with one more piece. Wipe the sides off. Just take that off. got the plastic protection one usually uses. But, um, it will just have to be like that. blow this out and um, put it in here just hanging there in this bag so it won't crash around I mean, it's not going to be and I'll put the cover on. We'll get rid of this so that's done. So we're going to actually be building in a fractal design uh, focus cheaty case and this is actually quite cheap. place for fans and stuff. Well, I don't know if I should really complain. Right, let's get it open so we can see what we're, what we're dealing with. Fun screws. So, it's the flexi panel, no gloss. There's actually some benefit to not having gloss. So here we go. So that's the way it 
It's got two pre-built in fans. Fan headers. So I went and put the um, power supply anyway in the case, so it's just to plug it in here. And I have a 650 watt brand new one for now. And just four screws. I mean, this will have a uh, now temporarily a CPU that I stole from the old computer, and that takes very little power compared to the newer Intel CPUs. And um, yeah, I think this will do fine. But now, I upgrade, if I ever upgrade the CPU, then I'll probably like to change this to something a bit more beefier. But I think it'll do for now. So now it'll be for the next phase. Okay, uh, next phase is to actually get the motherboard populated. So I've got a Prime Z390P um, motherboard for it. Let's see. for a little bit and then I can with some other cables and probably ah, can use those lots of those and that's packing to one side for now the back plate which we should put in the case let's not forget that up in there and then these collections here if you use some um, if you put those, yeah, motherboard-based hard drives, NVDMI, uh, whatever, M M2 slot, um, SSD cards, and there's actually two. Ah, I should open up. But they, these screws are needed, so don't throw these away. If you, if you buy a motherboard, otherwise you won't be able to um, upgrade to a faster SSD solution. Oh, they're actually now already quite cheap. I'm still holding a little bit back because you can buy a higher level, higher capacity, so-called standard SSD. Cheaper. Oops. Electricity. Nice 
Then we're going to put the memory and the processor in and the cooling solution. Put it in the picture here. So, and I have some um, ballistic sport memory to use there. I'll actually go get the cooler solution. Heavy. Haha, <laughs> pull one of these. That's quite nice. Cool almost. So, anyway. Let's see. Let's take that out. Lift out like that. Freeze here. Check what's wrong. get the ma manual to, to um, remember. And it's just to lift it off and then when you put it on then you need to make sure the notches are aligned. Oh, I should have cracked. But it's in the in the motherboard now. So we just Just over there. Looks like it's okay. It's supposed to pop out. That should be in there. So that should be should be in place. So now we have a processor in place. install the memory which is the uh, classical situation where one needs to make sure that one populates the slots in the correct way so we're going to populate and use this 8 gigabyte kit that I actually had hanging around to um, populate channel We will put the um, 
install this kit and the memory from the old PC. And they're DDR4, all of them. So those are, this is, uh, this here is 8, and that's 4, so I get 12 in total of memory. Oh, no, I did it wrong. Ah! Not completely awake. That should not go in there. It needs to make that each channel has to have the same memory type. So that was just me being sleepy. It's morning, actually, now. This one should go in here. So, that's one for There. So, that's populated. So, processors in, memories in. We're going to um, work on the cooler. So I'm just going to um, unbox it on camera. Even though I think many people have seen so many unboxings getting to be a bit boring. quite good quality. Always amazes me the size of cooling one. But of course this is a bit overrated for the processor, but the thing is that this motherboard, the motherboard supports um, um, next gen. Yeah, up to the very latest um, uh, Intel CPUs with this socket. So, um, yeah, so I thought if I buy this one and install this and I ever upgrade the CPU, then I never need, to, I don't need to change the cooler. So anyway, here's the actual cooler. Ew, that's heavy. So I'm going to have to 
protective label. So I'll slide down there, plastic scrap. Drawing compound. That with the 3D printing filament to help it keep dry. Doesn't work. We've got the weaker. Okay, alright. Well, here's a lot of instructions. Just open up the kit. Wow, that's a lot of parts. Yes, RGB, of course, because okay, we're going to have to look into this a bit. <laughs> One small omission, I forgot to buy an RGB controller. Ah, it's life. We have a trip to the store, but we can have that on as an upgrade. Okay, I'm gonna have to sort through the parts because here it says like for each configuration what parts are needed, so back in a sec. Okay, I've sorted through the stuff that's needed. So um I have a tool, thermal paste. It actually comes with a um with an adapter to feed the LEDs, so I was mistaken. I Realized that, so I have a connection to the power with a small controller thing with some buttons on it. We'll see what they do. And um, then you need these adapter bits, these screws, these headers or spacers, and you need these brackets. And that's pretty much it. And um, then I will have to read further because there's more instructions of exactly how to position the bits. So I will, um, I'm going to do one corner and then continue with the rest when I understand how it should be done. Okay, let's hope it will keep focus. Anyway, one is supposed to be to get this on the end there. And uh, with the screw like that. And um, there's a deviation with the instructions, so I'll try and show what I mean. The instruction says that there are positions on this part, but there isn't. It's just flat, so it's actually controlled by this. The positioning of the screw gets controlled by that. So we need to take one of these. Thing is, you can't. It's like only one position, so it sits in there, and then it moves. It moves backwards and forwards. And then we take this one. And it looks like that. And then we should um, insert it so that the screw goes in there. So it has to be this way around. And then one inserts it in, and then one needs to have the center. There are three places where it clicks on with this stopper and we want it on that one on that that one there and it's very easy to push it into for Why did that 
Actually, it's not, those those positionings aren't that exact. They slip very easily. But anyway, now it's now it's more correct in both cases. And then the screw has to be like pushed. Ah, this is very badly designed. So you need to make sure that the screw gets pushed into this holder. So that's the design they've made, the change they've made, I think. And then one needs to make sure that it's in the second groove, and then second groove. So they made the instruction, and then somebody went and changed the design. So that's just the way things work. In. This is such a such a crappy solution, but anyway. Oh, well, I have to look at what one has. So, next one, let me take the screw and insert it in the hole. Take this one, the right way around. Oops, I'm just going to put it on the wrong way around. The second position, turn it around, and then push the without moving the lock part that I just put on to move that the screw into the correct position. Far from what the instructions would make you understand. But that's life. So that far at least. And then this one needs to be put underneath the motherboard. And hopefully this the holes will line up. Let's see. Let's test our lock and I'll go offline if it if it doesn't line up. Oops. Just trying to put it in a place where you can see. Okay, so that far, so far, so good. And then we see what's the next phase. That is to position it in place. These spacers. I actually like to move things around a bit. So are there so now I should try probably start by hand. Oops. next to the <laughs> trunk. Sometimes difficult to remember. And then they have this special tool that one can actually adapt to a screwdriver. But don't tighten this a lot, I don't think, because this is plastic around there, so I'm just going to be very careful in how much I tighten it. So no 
no aggressive type. So there is a PCB there also. So this one's on judgment. Okay, so that's done. Okay, so I need to take the fan off and I'm probably going to do this in a different order than I recommend because here they say that one should take the protection cover off that and put the silicon. So I'm going to actually mess with the fan first. Get it off. And also put the brackets on. I'm really going to hold it without having thermal paste around. Thermal paste has a bad tendency of getting everywhere. Well, it's not careful. Okay, we need to take the, the fan off. So let's see how that goes. Oh, well that took came off nice and easy. Just make sure we take the cables off. Put that aside. To put the brackets in place. Let's see now. So it should be something like that, I suppose. And then it had two screws. I'm hoping that these are the screws, and I'm going to have to double check. No. No threads. No oh, wait, it's threads on this one. Now oh, this is where the instructions gets a bit hard to understand. Does that have a thread in it? Trying to see if this actually has a thread. Okay, mm, doesn't, so then it is the screws that they have assigned. I should screw it from the bottom. It's not those screws. So I misunderstood the instruction. Uh, so it's oh no. Okay, I have to go screw hunting. Okay. It's hard to read the instructions, but it's actually to put these brackets on. And you need the um the small screw. Not the big one. And yes, this has a thread in it. So I'm going to put it on the other side because I already did this side just to verify that it was correct. So then we put this one in. Screw from the underneath. And 
this facing down. People have tried to screw the big screws on first. And having this protection off before one does this face, I think is wrong. One should always take this off only at the very last second. So now it's to um, put it on the processor. Take this off. So, at the very last second. And we should try, try as best we can to position this and wiggle it around just a little bit. And let's hope we get the screws in place. And I suggest doing it just with the fingers. when you use your fingers you can tell if they're actually the threads are some fiddling. So have I applied enough enough pressure to get those um, these brackets to have an equal angle and it seems there's a screw and a spring no a washer and a spring underneath there but it doesn't doesn't meet up with that. I want to tighten it any more than that, it feels very stable. I always get a bit concerned with tightening it a bit too much. So it does put strain on. Since this back plate is also it's just plastic, it's not um, metal. Sometimes you get coolers where this is metal, and that's actually a better solution. Okay, and then we see if we can get enough clearance. Side this should be on. Where's the fan header? Ah, oh, there's the fan headers for the processor, so I suppose we should. And then, of course, one of them is going to be for the LED, so according to the instruction, it should go on this side. Oh, uh, right. uh, some things 
Like it's covering and it's blowing oh, on the whole thing, so it's just that it's not that a uh, positive feeling putting that on. Oh, sorry, I'm kicking the camera so much. It's just that it's exactly where my foot is. It's oh, I think I'm going to move it down a bit. I think I'm going to call it there. So that's that fixed. Anything. Ah, and then we have to start looking up the, um, the we'll plug in the, this is for the uh, lead stuff, so we can actually leave that for later. plug in. Find out which is the CPU fan or maybe these both headers are. I'll just have to look at the man. Okay, CPU fan. So that's this one here on the outer edge. I don't know why they put this some note here to take that away. It's just disturbing. thing is to put the back plate in the, in the case do some preparation on that so I'll just get things repositioned okay we got the case now and I moved the cables a bit out of the way so we've got more space now we need to put the back plate in so remember text text side out from the inside Everything goes okay, and the right way around, of course. Mm, which is, of course, like this. Mm, trying not to get damaged in the process. And these are really tricky. Sometimes you think you've got them seated, and then they're still not in place. Okay, the next thing that needs to be done with this case, at least, is we need to put the, um, put the spacers for the or headers for the motherboard. To, so there's only actually one in place, and that looks like it's in the correct, correct place. Yeah, and it's actually not a screw. Is there a screw on it? No. I think the idea is that this one here is so that you can just um, position the motherboard on it so it won't have a screw. I don't know if I like that solution. Hmm. I'll use it now. But anyway, now I'm going to look at the. Um, uh, try to just look at the whole positionings and then um, put the. Space which is where it's supposed to be. One will go there. Oops.
Okay, well, I'll fiddle these in place and come back a little bit later. Okay, now I got the spacers in place. So I left this one, which is just the position of the motherboard. And then should be able to put the motherboard in. Here, please. Uh, quite a good invention because it's uh, well, the back plate usually resists positioning the motherboard correctly so actually having that as just a pin makes it actually a lot easier so so far and then it's these um these screws that one needs to use to screw them down screw the motherboard down so that's just to put them in place. Hopefully they will sink properly. So that's one there. Oh, I'm sorry about the background noise <laughs> my family having their discussion. to do something about positioning the camera. I'm always kicking it with my feet. Okay. Anyway, five screws are needed. And I will fiddle them into place and be back soon. Okay, now we're this far, so let's try and get some cable, cables connected to the motherboard. So let me take the 24 pin connector, and it goes down in here. See that we have an option to tie it back a little bit later. motherboard down too much. Modern motherboards have the, compared to old-fashioned clunky ones, is that they're, they're actually made to save material, they're made thinner, and to increase production speed, they're made very thin, so they're, you know, they're not mechanically as sturdy as good old computers. And they actually did have the money to Thirty, and then you need CPU power, and this is going to use a four, no, eight-pin configuration. So in this power supply, you need to actually connect these two connectors together. So there, so they click together. So then I can. Oh, here was it? I orientated myself. Oh, there. I turn the case around, I lost orientation. Anyway, so that will go down to there and click on, make sure it's seated properly. So okay, so that's main power for the motherboard. And um, main power for the CPU. And I have to try and do some cable management. Oh, it's so much pulling around. Okay, so now I'm going to have to have a look at fan. And chassis fans are here. I'll just connect 
those things actually. There's no where those go without having to look at the manual, but the rest of the stuff I have to look at the manual first. Cheap case. I suppose one can't really expect wonders. And anyway, fans you can always change out as long as you have the places for them. And you can buy better ones. But as long as they're not unreasonably noisy, I suppose it's not. Even if they're constant speed. But at least they have um, RPM monitoring so they know that if the fan stops working totally, that will not. Okay, for the rest of them, I'll have to, exp have to look at the manual a bit to um, identify where the rest of the stuff needs to plug in. Some of it I know, some of it... I mean, I think it's probably very standard, but I think it's better to actually consult the manual. So, back soon. So, now I'm going to have to try and get some of the motherboard cables into place. And I'm sorry for the background noise, I just had to put the air conditioning on. It's getting really hot. Anyway, this is the um, USB 3.0 connector. And that you'll find down here on the motherboard. And we just need to make sure we don't put it in the wrong way around. Oh, it looks like it's keyed with a blocked pin. So. Give up, I need extra light. Where's my extra light? Here. My extra light. Black against black again. connector and that goes right next to it. Slot down here. So pop that in. And we have audio So short sure, this one. It's actually a bit tricky to get into place. one is this one here which is the front panel connectors for um, power led reset switch um, hard drive activity that's that power okay power switch power leds and HD and reset 
and they have to go into this connector here. And one has to look at the manual to see what pinout they used. Because, um, yeah, it's never been standardized really. So. And as you see from the, this here, that they're separate cables. So. Um, the idea is that one should actually just put them in the right places. So I'm going to fiddle with that for a while. And it is a bit tricky because there's not that much space. Okay. So again, front panel audio, uh, USB 3.0, uh, USB 2.0, front panel um, switches or LEDs. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it for that. So uh, now I'm going to. Um, put the storage stuff in place now. Ah, oh, graphics card. Yeah. I have to clean it up a bit. So I took it from an older machine. So, did some basic cable management at this phase. So I routed the um, motherboard cable. Well, the motherboard power cables behind the motherboard, so they're not visible here directly. And I um, tried to route these as best I could. They'll be tied up in the back, so it'll look a bit neater once that's done. So now we have actually a better possibility to insert the graphics card. So that'll be our um, next job, is to put that in place. So. Graphics card, so I have my. Uh, I have a GTX 1050 that's a bit left over. First time I've seen thumb screw based screws. Or cards. Summer's really heating up here. You can hear it from the air conditioning just running flat out. So that's in, and then of course, importantly enough, we need to have power delivery. There. We do 
use and tying this stuff back off a little. Yeah, that's what that goes in there. Six pin power. And I will tie the rest back as best I can. Okay, so that's the graphics part. What should we tackle next? Um, I need some storage. And, um, that is several different things. I need to put a CD-ROM, SSD, and a hard drive. So I will get set up here. For um, a week. I need to start putting this up right now. Anyway, we have two drive bays. We'll take them up like that. We have the SSD, we'll go on one of them. Storage installation, so we have a true drive base. One of the SSD, and the other one will be. Uh, it looks like for the this one will be toolless installation. Sides of these and flick it around. So that's done. And then this needs actually screws. So I'll set that up. I think I'll have the hard drive in the bottom bay. Search up the screws for that SSD. Okay, got the SSD. Just to put four screws on the back, and that goes in there. Now I'm going to have to um, figure out how to route the power. I think I'll do is I will just jump to that section and be back when I'm actually finished so I can show how I sold. So after fiddling for a while I was able to bring the, one of the power cables through this opening and just around it. I was able to connect it there. So I'm going to um, open the show and do the same trick for the SATA cables also. Okay, got the SATA. Okay, let's connect. You can see it there. These two connectors down here. And root it a bit tightly into the SSD and the hard drive. And then this needs to be just pushed back on the back panels in place. And a bit massaging these cables. Out. And I think it will be okay. A bit tight for the hard drive when it comes to space. It might have been good to use the 90 degree bend connector there. I wanted it 
to use it on the motherboard side, so we'll see. Will actually work. Actually, just loosen it up on the front, and then we get just enough space. It's going to be jammed between the panels. Just not necessarily going to have to lock. Okay, so that's that. And now I think I will proceed in driving. So, anyway, that was easy. You just pop this cover off on the inside. No tools needed. CD drive. It's got the same SATA connectors, power and data. Push it into place. And then um, four screws. And uh, yeah, so it's the cable. And then it's done. So I will get and do that. <laughs> it's getting a bit packed in here. Anyway, for the for the CPU fan. RGB. I rooted the cable on underneath the graphics cord. And then you have this set up. Now you have a power pickup, and then it goes into this module with these control. And then you need uh, that adapter to get them plugged together. And by the way, this is very loose, loosely connected. So I think I'm going to have some tape, tape on it. Because otherwise, it's just, I think it's going uh, it's, it's to drop out. So that's a bad, bad design. A little bit spiky. Yeah, they're not good. Not long enough. Oh, wait. We need to know hmm, what direction. It seems to be. Another complication. Let me check this in before. It has an arrow on it. And then what does this have on Ah, that has an arrow on it. So I suppose that means the arrow should meet. I'm guessing that's what it is. It falls off. You see, it's just—it's just no good. There's, there's somebody who came up with that idea. It's just—it's it's just absolute garbage. Wow, that's such a loose connection. Sorry, I have to take a pause to fix that. Okay, I finally think I got it to stick. Oh, it's okay. So, anyway. Um, so now I think it's just um, you know, the final cable management I will leave until um, I know that it works. But, uh, I think it's now time to start. Set up to for first start, which means checking or checking stuff and um, yeah, let's see if all this junk will actually start up. So let's get gathering what we need to start it up. So that'll be first start. So let's see what will happen. I have a USB and, um, disconcerted with the OS with Windows installed on. And these two drives, one of them is from a one computer with the OS installed, and the SSD is from a computer and also has an OS installed. So might be a bit confusing, but I'll sort out that separately offline. But um, let's see if we actually hear something. Okay, something's happening. Oh, 
Maus. Okay, so it's, oh, it's doing this. Reconfig, reboot. So. No picture. Why no picture? seems to be inactive. Okay, it's like the graphics card has no power. Let's see. Ah, not looking good, is it? <laughs> I must say, sometimes luck runs out. So it's really hot and. Um, Turns out the i5-8400 processor is not supported by this motherboard. So what I actually had to do was to go and find an alternative. So I bought this one, i3-9100F, completely in brand new latest generation. So I'm just going to go through the same procedures of installing the processor as I had shown earlier and then uh, ah, we'll see if it actually boots. I mean, it looked like it was kind of sane, the whole system. Except for, yeah, not getting any video. Anyway, we'll see. Well, it installed. I hope it will be okay. I'm just going to try and start it now. Well, now it's at least behaving a bit different. Got the memory training light on now. And it reboots a couple of times. See if I can clear that one. Oh yeah, lights out. And now it works. Yeah, it was the um, memory check LED that came on. That's the final tour in this problem. And it indicated that, um, that well, the error, it indicates an error that there's something um, wrong with the one of the um, memory modules. And I got my little helper here to sniff it out. And it turned out that the memory module closest to the fan wasn't pressed in well enough. So I just adjusted that and then bingo, we're here. So that's a, that's a good start. So now I can actually... Oh, and then I got really, really, really hungry. So I'm just going to have something to eat real quick. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, he's just had a bath. So he's a, he's a bit vet. Yes, are you vet dog? <laughs> Okay, next step to, and it's reporting all the devices we've installed, two hard drives, one CD-ROM. So, I'll just connect the keyboard and mouse and then start working on it. So, seems to be working okay. Didn't last time I tested. Anyway. Yeah, oh, it's been a hot day. Just um, completed putting the PC 
into order with the last installations of software. And then I've um, yeah, you know, installed it in its place of use with the monitor. Uh, one sad thing, the, the Cooler Master Fan RGB died. So there's no lights on the CPU fan anymore. And I couldn't really quickly find out what was wrong with it. So I don't know, maybe, the, maybe that small controller died. I tried to put, ensure all the cables were together, but I couldn't see anything immediately wrong. And anyway, it doesn't matter because the, my wife decided to um, position the, you know, for, to get the, yeah, the best optimal use of the table, and she put the PC against the partition with the window against the partition, so you can't even see it anymore. <laughs> so, all that time spent on cable management, totally wasted. Um, yeah, one thing I would like to say about uh, the bulges in the side panels that I didn't really comment on earlier is that they actually do give a, uh, quite a significant amount of extra space on the sides of the PC to enable to um, have cables um, behind there. Like if you put cables behind the, the motherboard tray, um, you actually get quite a lot of space. That was quite, uh, that's a real nice detail because that helped me because I thought, I was, how am I going to get the panel closed? Then it was, ah, oh, but it has a bulge in it, so no problem. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, next is going to be a bit, little bit of a rant, because um, I actually, I did the upgrade, um, and um, I have a Windows 10 Pro license uh, that I would have liked to have activated. So, in, in my case, I've registered them as electronic licenses behind my Microsoft account. So basically what you do is you, you um, do a major upgrade or install a new PC and then you can go into the um, electronic license list and you can, through the, um, you know, the, the menu system, and then uh, you can select what, what machine uh, are you using and if you've made major hardware changes or not, and then you can just basically say, oh, apply that license to that machine. And, and um, now, for some odd reason, it was just saying, you know, Windows can't, when you press it, there was no error code, and it just says, Windows cannot be activated, and then it said, please try later. And, and I tried that for two days, and couldn't get anywhere, so. Uh, so what I had to finally do is that um, I tried to look through all the help system, but most of them, most of the chat, the roots in the help system ended up with pushing you into the Microsoft Store, basically saying, ah, oh, you have to buy a new license. And um, the price for a new license is 250 US dollars. Kind <laughs> of repay 250 US dollars for a friggin' license. Not, not as a private person, that's not really doable. So anyway, I, I do have access to a site that um, where you can buy product keys uh, very cheaply. So I was able to pick up a Windows 10 Pro key for um, a global one for um, I think it was like 15 US dollars. So I mean, usually I don't use the site. I mean, I don't mind paying Microsoft, but I mean, I, 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 I even tried to see if I can phone a help desk or something. But when they gave, when that help track ended, then it gave me U.S.-based toll numbers, and I can't call U.S.-based toll numbers from outside the United States. So forget. It, so, so I was forced to go and buy a new license, but thankfully only for 15 USD, and then, and then activate that. Bad, bad performance for Microsoft. I mean, that was my license, and I had actually paid real money for it. And and then they blocked me from using it. And and the thing is that they, you know, I had a product key for it, and then Microsoft said one, uh, in, uh, one phase or another, they said, would you like to convert this to an electronic key? But it's much better to have it as an electronic key. Then we will store it for you, and then you just use it from behind your Microsoft account. So, okay, be, yeah, great. If I had had a product key, I would have been up and running and activated. And now when I have to try and get the electronic license, then I'm screwed. So I, I'm, I'm going to post the link to that um, uh, yeah, key site. Um, it's not hacker, hacker work or anything. It's just a, yeah, one of the many sites where you can buy product keys. Um, for anybody else who gets in a jam like I am, so you don't have to pay, pay 250 US dollars for something you have already purchased from Microsoft. I, I think it's really sad that one couldn't resolve it with Microsoft. Uh, that is just pathetic. But anyway, that's the way life goes. 
Uh, anyway, so that concludes this, um, the PC build. Um, I don't know, I've done too many PC build related videos now, but uh, we have been going through a bit of a family upgrade um, bonanza here, so uh, hoping to get back to more normalized content after this. So if you like this, uh, consider subscribing, hit the bell to get notified of more videos, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.